Welcome back, Angelo is here and we're going to see a fantastic game in which Gelfand with white pieces managed to crush his opponent. Without further ado, let's dive in. The game played 2021 between Israel and Germany. Gelfand with white pieces started the game with a move d4 and now we have knight f6, c4, e6. And after knight f3 we have a lot of main lines, one of them is uh, d5, the queen's gambit decline, another line here is b6, queen's Indian defense, and another line is the Bogo Indian defense with bishop to b4, this is the easiest plan actually. But here black player played the move a6, maybe he would like to confuse his opponent or he, or he would like to attack his queen side instantly. Now we have knight f3, d5, takes, takes, and now we have the Karlsbart or Karpov structure. White will play e3 at some point and black will play c6, so we have this position. But a6 it's little out of um, the move actually here, out of the game, Not, I'm not completely sure why he played this move. So we have bishop to b5, bishop e6, and here a normal line could be something like that, development, development, c6, Queen c2, bishop to d6, white have a small plus, and a6 sometimes help black to play this move b5, this is the idea, actually, and um, th this could be normal line, right? But he captured here instantly, queen will recapture, and queen to b3, he would like to attack on d5 and on b7, so black is little forced here to play the rook here, artificially it's not good to put the rook on a7, we cannot win black right now because the rook is out of the game, but uh, we cannot really attack that rook, right? And black said, okay, I'm protecting that pawn, you're forcing your queen, engaging your queen to attack on b7, and I'm engaging, engaging a, a lower value piece, the rook, to protect that pawn. And we're going to develop the game, right? We're going to play bishop to d6, castling, and then I'm going to release my rook step by step. Here white actually cannot capture on d5 because black can drop back the queen, and after e4 to protect the knight we have a pin here, he can play something like c6, a crazy line, con crazy line continue like that, attacking the rook, we can capture this one, he can capture the rook, he can capture on e4, the knight is under attack, after that this pawn is little vulnerable, we can develop our pieces uh, very very fast and uh, it's a very nice way to lose the, the control over the game, for that reason why I didn't play that crazy line, but he continued with the move a3. It's a little difficult to analyze this move very, very deeply unless we hack Gelfand's computer. If you manage to do that, I cannot. I don't have the skills to have uh, to hack Gelfand, and uh, it's a little difficult to explain this move. Otherwise, maybe he analyzed this for many, many hours. It's um, and the main idea behind this move is to stop Bishop to B4 at some point to stop this one because a white's idea is to play maybe queen to e2 and after that play in the center of the board e4. I created a video on Greek and I analyzed this uh, position so I'm, I'm understanding a little better right now and this could be the main idea behind this uh, strange looking move a th a3. But of course e3 is another very popular and very normal way to continue the game. We have a3 here, queen d8 because queen doesn't have any role, specific role on f6. She, she would like, he would like to regroup his pieces and queen drop uh, back. We have h4 very very aggressively and already Gelfand uh, stayed his uh, plan. He would like to play e4 at some point, he would like to castle the long side and he would like to attack in the king's side. This is the ideas behind this move h4. Aronian likes this h4 advance uh, push um, early in the game. We have bishop here and here another game continue like e4, c6, e5, white has a little more space but everything is under control after this for example, queen c2, b5, rook d1, something like that and uh, the players will uh, continue the game. The position is approximately equal and the better player will win. But we don't have this development over the game because Gelfand came up with a novelty, queen c2, and he would like to play instantly here, you see a3, what a3 is doing. He would like to play e4, as you can see with a yellow arrow, and uh, he played instantly. 
takes takes and knight f6. Knight e to g5 because when you are attacking you should keep pieces on the board and we have bishop on d5, knight there, eyeballing on f7, he cannot capture this pawn right away and after c6 we have bishop to c4. He would like to exchange a key defender in order to attack the pawn on f7. And you may wonder here what will happen after um, a bishop takes on g2 actually. For example, castling, long castling, and again he can capture on g2, but I'm not recommend you to take pawn, uh, pawns like that because he can take, he can play rook to g8, this is one idea, to create some open file against your king, this is one idea, and the, most, the more aggressive approach is to capture on g7, right, on f7 right now. Because we are attacking the queen, she cannot really capture with the rook because we have two pieces there. And if he just move the queen away, we can play this uh, discover check. And after king h8, you have the opportunity to deliver a powerful and really cool checkmate. What are you going to do with white pieces? If you found it, you are very welcome to write the comments below. Very nice position to write a comment below with this uh, solution. Very nice actually. And during the game, he just captured there the knight recapture. You can see we are eyeballing this f7 uh, square. We have the knight and queen there. This is the typical way to continue the attack to create an attack. This knight is extremely important piece. And maybe black white can continue something like that and sacrifice his rook in order to deliver a checkmate on f7. So prophylactic move is g6. Try to play against this plan. It is a normal move actually to, to play like that, to stop the activity of, of knight and queen. And we have knight back, knight h5 and black would like to exchange some pieces, maybe to capture there, maybe to play something like f6, maybe not right now, or to play knight f4. And here it's a diagram position, it's white's turn. White is standing better here, clearly better, because he has better activity. His pieces is bet are better developed, as you can see. The knight are in the center of the board, try to create some attack here against the king side. We have an active queen. The rooks can jump over the attack very, very easily. And if you just capture there, we can open up a line for our pieces. And what is black's problem? Black's problem is this... Um, this piece, rook a7 is out of the game, it is offside as you can say and uh, white has better position thanks to his activity and he is obliged to do something right now, he has to attack right now because if you don't attack, if you don't create any tactics right now then he is going to miss his opportunity and black can coordinate his position so this is the time in which you should attack and he found this amazing time and he sacrificed the knight there Whoa, we're attacking the rook, and after this, he played g4. The knight is under attack. What to do now? Because if you just drop back the knight, this is a sub variation, it didn't happen during the game. We can play h4, h5, we are attacking g6, and we would like to open up the rook. For example, after this, we can take, and after something like that, we can play g4. Kick away this uh, key defender. And after that we can deliver a check on h7 and now he don't have a lot of moves after this he can go back and now we have this f4 protecting everything and queen can drop into the attack like queen h6 and deliver the final checkmate it's very difficult to defend here it's impossible actually to defend here so this didn't happen during the game and black and black uh, after this move he didn't drop the knight back but he played knight f4 Quick question for you, what are you going to do with white pieces? Be careful. And sometimes you need to be very, very precise, very, very accurate during the game. Because if you played the most normal move in the position, like h5, it's totally fine to play a move like that. Black has a defense and he can play king to g7. Now it's extremely difficult or impossible for white to open up lines. Black can put the rook on h on um, h8 as you can see and he can maintain his knight on a4 a powerful knight on a4 and it's almost impossible for white to continue the game the game or just uh, the attack he cannot open lines because we can play something like g5 for that reason you need to be accurate and after this Kelfand, a very strong player 
played this very strong move queen to e4. The idea is to attack the knight and he is precise, you can see he is attacking the knight and black for just this moment he cannot protect this knight on e4, he cannot play a g5 as you can see with a green arrow, arrow because we can capture that with check. So he dropped the knight back and now we have h5. He performed his plan but with a very forcing way and in chess we have two ideas. One idea is to, to find the plan and the other idea is how to execute the plan. We need to execute our plans very very nicely uh, with uh, accuracy. And now he played um, knight to g5 here, knight g5 attacking the queen, but you can see it's almost the same position, but we have the queen on e4 and the pawn on h5. So we have a check here with the rook and the pawn. He played this one and queen to c2. Now he has another problem, as you can see we are threatening f4, kick away that knight and after that the rook can penetrate into black's position. So we have f6, try to maintain the knight there, a very nice moment by Gerfeld, he played knight f7, try to exchange this key defender and black don't have a lot of moves, for example if he just captured there, we have the intermediate check, we, we are not obliged to capture instantly on uh, f7, we can give this check and after that we can capture the rook can recapture there, the, the queen is protecting the rook actually, so he has to take there and now we can deliver a checkmate like this. So let's go back, during the game he didn't play that one and he, and he just sacrificed the exchange in order to maintain his powerful knight on, on um, g5, now we have the exchange, queen d6, try to stop this f4 idea, because the knight is very important to keep this knight in the center of the board, queen here, queen d5, he just created a new queen, okay, I'm not sure why he just uh, played this uh, instantly or he didn't play something else, but in any case, and now we have f4, this is a key idea, try to kick away that knight and if this knight goes away, then we have this checkmate. So, take, take, and now you can see we have black has two pieces, knight and bishop, against two, one rook, and black's problem is that this rook on a7 is offside. For that reason, you should be very, very careful how to develop your pieces in the center of the board. You should develop them in the opening, you should develop, develop them nicely and in nice positions in order to have a sound and coordinated game. Because now you can see black don't have one single move in order to coordinate everything. The knight is under attack and if he just go on f7, this is a good way to lose the knight. Because we have this powerful check, king is in a mating position and he should put the knight again on g5 and he's going to lose the knight. So he played this one, now we have a check, he goes there and... Um, he played another nice move, he played rook to g6, threatening the pawn, creating problems, forcing black to do this in order to defend, and now rook g3. He is threatening again to play rook to h3 to attack the knight, and for example after something like b5, you can see the bishop is not there in this diagonal, so we have uh, this one, and after this to protect, uh, we can do that, actually why is a little better, but we have rook c3 instantly, attacking the pawn, he cannot push it right now, the bishop is not there, and if he just play this one, we have d5, if he just push it, we can start pushing our pawn forward, and after that we can capture, and we can penetrate to enemy camp, as you can see, he don't have coordination with his pieces, he, don't, he didn't have the time to play one move to stabilize everything, this is the problem. So, during the game he didn't play b5, he just played king to g8, a logical move, try to avoid the pin on the h file, we have this one activating the rook, b6, and a check. Here, he played knight f8, because if it went on f7, we have rook to b8, attacking the knight and the b7 pawn. You can see, the rooks are more active right now, so they are better in this position, in this particular position. So he played uh, this, the knight dropped back, and again, I, I should mention here, you, you saw a beautiful attack, right? You saw a, a sacrifice on f7, but we cannot checkmate the enemy at all positions. And at some time, if you manage to have a better end game, you can go there, because with a better end game, you can win the game. And we have this one attacking the pawn here, he captured one pawn there, the game is not so exciting, so I'm going to push it uh, forward, to move it forward faster, a check here, and after that we have a pin, 
he tried to un unpin his knight, we have this one, and the problem is again the bishop, he didn't manage to activate his own bishop, so you don't have time to, to do something, to create counterplay. We have that, we have d5, he played this move, we have d6, and you can, as you can see, black pieces don't have a lot of mobility. Uh, now he played this one, we have an exchange, he captured with a knight, another precise move now, he played the check, the king has to go back, and now we have b5, and as you can see, the pawn on f5 is controlling some key squares, the king cannot activate, and after b4, the knight cannot activate itself, because it's limited, right? And the pawn on d6 with the green color, it's very, very strong. We have this exchange, he played this one, we have this attack attacking the knight, and after that he played the final move during the game, d7. If you're going to be smart with black to play something like that, attacking the rook and the pawn, we have a counter blow, rook to um, g8, attacking the bishop. And if you just capture there, we can capture the, the bishop, and after that we can play rook to f7 to capture that pawn. And if black plays uh, king bishop f8, for example, the king is overloaded. He cannot protect everything. We can take, he can take, and now we can promote to a new queen, attacking the king and the knight. So we can capture the knight and we won the game. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed the video. Here it's time for action. This is the initial page of my website and here you can click give me access to get access to free lessons. You can read this page and if you scroll down here you can add your name and your email. After that you are going to take a free lesson how to avoid chess blunders. So time for action is now and you are very welcome to join my mail list.